pharmaceutical compounding is a branch of pharmacy that continues to play a crucial role in drug development. Pharmacists develop and test pharmaceutical formulations for new drugs to ensure that active ingredients are effective and stable. Physicians may prescribe individually compounded medications for patients with unusual health needs. Compounded preparations are especially common for patients requiring limited dosage strengths, patients with drug allergies, home health care and anti-cancer treatment. Cytotoxic drugs, sometimes known as anti-neoplastic, anti-cancer or chemotherapy drugs, include a wide range of chemical compounds. Because of their ability to kill tumor cells, they are extensively used to treat cancer. However, their actions are not specific to tumor cells, and normal cells may also be damaged. As a result, they can produce significant side effects in patients or others exposed. This, together with the increasing use and complexity of chemotherapy, has raised concerns about the risks to healthcare workers involved in preparing and administering cytotoxic drugs. Increases in health and safety requirements have led to a greater use of isolators to protect both patients and healthcare workers. The United States Pharmacopeia, the USP and other related organizations have established enforceable guidelines for sterile drug preparation. An example of such guidance is USP Chapter 797, which requires the use of engineering controls such as isolators. While conventional engineering controls such as laminar flow clean benches and biological safety cabinets may be used, USP 797 imposes stricter requirements on the environment in which this equipment must be sited. In isolators, the total physical separation between the product and the pharmacy environment makes them more robust and immune to environmental disturbances. Isolators protect compounded drug products from room contaminants. Some offer operator and environmental protection for handling hazardous drugs. Three different types of isolators are offered by manufacturers, each designed for different applications. Positive pressure isolators are suitable for work involving non-hazardous materials. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under positive pressure to the room in order to maintain sterility in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. Negative pressure recirculating isolators are suitable for work involving hazardous materials, anti-neoplastic or cytotoxic compounding applications, such as chemotherapy. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under negative pressure to the room in order to maintain operator protection in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. They may be optionally vented. Negative pressure total exhaust isolators are suitable for work involving hazardous materials that may volatilize. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under negative pressure to the room in order to maintain operator protection in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. They must be externally vented. Isolators protect the product and in some cases the operator through the following. Total physical separation between the product and the environment. Unlike in laminar flow clean benches or biological safety cabinets, the operator works through ports in the front of the isolator. The intentional use of air pressure relationships, positive or negative, defines the direction of air flow in and out of the isolator. This experiment illustrates how a positive pressure isolator protects drug products from contamination, even in case of a breach. Notice how no room air enters the arm ports even with the glove assembly removed. The use of directed airflow, either unidirectional or turbulent, maintains sterility in the work zone. 
Unidirectional airflow, also known as laminar airflow, is the most effective. Isolators incorporating unidirectional airflow typically direct filtered air downward in a piston-like fashion, therefore rapidly purging the work zone of contaminants. This experiment with a smoke source illustrates the efficacy of unidirectional airflow. Notice how all contaminants are rapidly purged and cross-contamination of materials in the isolator is minimized. The use of high efficiency filters to capture aerosols and particles. Isolators utilize either HAPA or ALPA filters. HAPA filters are 99.99% efficient at 0.3 microns, whilst ALPA filters are 99.999% efficient at 0.1 to 0.3 microns. The supply air entering the isolator is always filtered. Exhaust air exiting the isolator is filtered, except in certain positive pressure isolators designed only to protect the product. The use of external venting on some negative pressure isolators discharges volatilized hazardous drugs out from the building. HAPA or ALPA filters are only effective against aerosols and particles and cannot remove vapors. The use of material transfer processes allows material transfer in and out of the isolator without exposing the operator to drugs or compromising the sterility of the compounding environment. Appropriate personal protection equipment, PPE, and work practices are required to reduce risks to both the patient and the operator. Gloves and gowns with knit cuffs should be worn when compounding sterile drug products. If the work involves hazardous or cytotoxic drugs, use a disposable gown made of non-linting and non-absorbent material. Don a pair of powder-free disposable chemotherapy gloves with the gloves covering the gown cuff. Prior to compounding, verify if the isolator has been properly shut down by the previous user. Methods to verify proper shutdown can include, but are not limited to, a checklist in the pharmacy, a sign-off at the preparation workspace, an electronic log at a local PC or a tagging procedure for the isolator. Turn on the fan. Check the sleeves and gloves for any breach before beginning work as they are prone to wear. Wipe down the interior of the isolator. Change to a fresh pair of gloves before beginning work and every 30 minutes during prolonged chemo work sessions. Plan the work session before materials are placed in the isolator. Organize the necessary materials for compounding before placing them in the pass-through. Allow pass-through air to purge before the inner door is opened. In order to maintain air cleanliness inside the chamber, both doors should not be opened at the same time.